When you're trying to figure out which strategy to use to factor a polynomial, it's kind of nice because it's based on the number of terms that you've got. We're going to go ahead and start with two terms, then we'll look at three terms and four terms. Each has their own strategy. So I've got several different examples here with two terms. If you've got one like this first one, this is a difference of squares, and we're going to use the formula a squared minus b squared is equal to their sum a plus b times their difference a minus b. This is the difference of squares. Note that the sum of squares does not factor. So if there was a plus sign in between, we would not be able to factor this one. So I want to figure out what got squared. So in this case, it was an x and it was a 2 that got squared. So as I factor this, it's going to be the sum of x plus 2 times the difference x minus 2, and that's my factorization. Difference of squares is definitely one of my favorites to factor. The next one, we've got a sum, and again, two terms. This one, I've got an x cubed and an 8. Both are something cubed, right? So this would be an x that was cubed, and 8 is a 2 that is cubed. We are going to use the sum of cubes formula. So this is our second formula for two terms, and it goes like this. So a cubed plus b cubed, again, it's a formula makes it super nice, a plus b, and then in the next set of parentheses, we've got a squared minus ab plus b squared. We just have to figure out what got cubed. So in this case, it was an x and a 2. So I'm going to go ahead and follow my formula. So I need a plus b first. So that's going to be x plus 2. And then I'm going to do this trinomial. a squared is x squared minus ab. That would be x2, but let's write it as 2x. So minus 2x plus b squared. 2 squared is 4. So that guy right there is 2 squared. And this is our factorization. Okay, we've got one more formula for two terms, and that is the difference of cubes. But for this one, the very first thing that we notice is that we've got this 2 out in front. 2 is not something cubed. 54 is also an even number. So the first thing that I need to do here is to work with my greatest common factor. What goes into both of these terms? Well, the coefficients are both even, so I can divide out a GCF of 2. I'm going to divide both of these by 2. The 2 is going to come out in front, and then we're left with a y cubed 54 divided by 2 is 27, so we get minus 27. Let's move this up so I've got some more room, and let's go ahead and do our difference of cubes. So for that difference of cubes formula, we need a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b, and then I've got a squared plus a b plus b b squared. Okay, so what got cubed here? It was a y that was cubed, and 27 is 3 cubed. So our a and our b are going to be a y and a 3. So taking what I've got right here, 2y cubed minus 27 is equal to 2 now I'm going to go ahead and factor what I've got in the parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and factor that difference of cubes. So this becomes a minus b, so that's y minus 3. And then I get a squared, so y squared, plus ab. Again, it could be y3, but I'm going to write that as 3y. And then plus 3 squared. So 3 squared is going to be a 9, but let me go ahead and write out my entire factorization. That 2, the GCF, tags along, and then I used my difference of cubes formula. y minus 3, y squared plus 3, uh, y squared plus 3y plus 9, and that's our factorization. When we are factoring three terms in our polynomial, our goal is the same thing every time. So our goal is to get 
a product of two binomials, so two terms times two terms. And there's a couple of different ways that these might look. So in our first example, let's do x squared plus 5x plus 6. I know that that goal is two binomials, two terms times two terms. I'm going to go ahead and set up a table over here. Um, as I'm putting this together, first of all, let's do the x's. This is going to be an x times an x. And to come up with the 6 and the 5x in the middle, I'm going to use my table here. So I want my values to multiply to be 6. So they're going to multiply to be 6. But I want them to add up. This is really what FOIL does for us. I want them to add up to be the middle coefficient. So I want those to add up to be 5. As I look for pairs that multiply to be 6, I can start with 1 times 6, but 1 plus 6 is equal to 7. So that one's out. I could also do, though, 2 times 3, and 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, so that's the pair that I want. So I can take the 2 and the 3, they're both positive, and I can put a plus 2 here and a plus 3 there in either order. If you wanted to check this, you could check by multiplying it with FOIL. Okay, let's do an example though because you could have a lead coefficient that's not 1. In this next one, I've got 4x squared plus 12x minus 40. So I do have a lead coefficient that's not 1. The very first thing that I do here, though, is to look for a greatest common factor. So is there something that divides into each of my terms? Well, there's not a variable because the last term doesn't have an x with it. But I do notice that 4 divides into everybody. So I can go ahead and divide a 4 out of each of my terms. This is going to give me a 4 out in front. And I'm going to do that division to figure out what's left inside the parentheses. 4x divided by 4, or I should say 4x squared divided by 4, leaves me with that x squared. 12 divided by 4 leaves me with a positive 3, so plus 3x. And then minus 10, or minus 40 divided by 4 is minus 10. Now I can factor what I've got inside my parentheses using a binomial times a binomial, and I'm going to leave that 4 out in front. So this is what it looks like here. So my goal is to factor what I've got inside. I know to get to the x squared because now inside I have a lead coefficient of 1. To multiply to be x squared is going to be an x times an x. Let's set up a really quick table over here to figure out what other numbers we need. I want to multiply to be that last number, negative 10. And I want two numbers that add up to be the middle coefficient, which is 3. So I could start with, let's start with um, 5 times negative 2. And this first one works because 5 plus negative 2 is equal to 3. And I can put these together in either order to fill in those last two terms. Now in this one, we were able to factor out the lead coefficient. In this next one, we're going to have a lead coefficient that we need to use in our factorization. For this one, I've got 9x squared plus 51x plus 30. Now the first thing that I do again is to look for a greatest common factor, and this one does have a greatest common factor. What goes into all three of these? Again, they don't all have an x, so I'm just going to look at the coefficients, the numbers in front, and 3 does divide into everybody. So I've got a GCF of 3. I'm going to divide that 3 out and write it out in front, so my 3 goes out in front. What I've got left inside the parentheses is what I've divided. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and I still have the x squared. 51 divided by 3, you could do that in your calculator as well, and I get 17x, and then 30 divided by 3 is 10. Now I have a lead coefficient that is not equal to 1. So as I set up my parentheses here, those two binomials, which is my goal, I'm not going to fill in either the outer or the inner. Instead, I am going to undo this, and I am going to split up that middle term. 
so I can factor this much, much more easily. So I'm going to split up this middle term. Let's go ahead and put that table together. I'm still going to be looking for pairs of values, but this time I want them to multiply to be the first coefficient times the last coefficient. So 3 times positive 10 is equal to 30, and I still want them to add to be the middle coefficient, which is 17. So I can start to come up with some pairs here, like 3 times 10, that would be 13, so that one does not work. We could also do, um, let's do 15 times 2, that one's it, isn't it? 15 plus 2 is equal to 17, and that's the pair that I want this pair is going to break up my middle term. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite everything I've got, leaving me with a little extra room. So I've got the 3 GCF on the outside. Inside the parentheses, I've got 3x squared, but I'm going to break up that 17x with a 15 and a 2. So it's going to be plus 15x plus 2x, and then I've got the 10 on the end, plus 10. From here, I'm going to factor this in pairs. So I'm just going to split these up into their own pairs. I'm going to write what I've got in the next line. So I've got this 3 here, and I'm looking for a GCF in my pairs. In this first pair, I notice that a 3 goes into each of those coefficients, and I take the smallest power on the x, which is just x. So I'm going to divide both of these by a 3x. The 3x lives out in front. As I do that division, 3's cancel. 1x cancels, and I've got an x left over to the 15. So 15 divided by 3 is positive 5, and the x's do cancel. Okay, now let's look at this next pair. In the next pair, what goes into 2x and 10? Uh, that would just be a 2. So my GCF for these is 2. I'm going to divide both of those by a 2. It's a positive 2. I need to go ahead and keep track of those signs. So I've got a positive 2. As I do my division, I end up with an x plus a 5. Notice how these match. So I've got my x plus 5 and my x plus 5. Five. I can factor that out. So let me give myself just a tiny bit more room. We are so close to the end here. I've got my 3. Let's go ahead and leave everything inside the parentheses, at least for now. I can factor out that x plus 5 out in front. So I get an x plus 5. That leaves me with another set of parentheses with the 3x and the plus 2 left, so 3x plus 2. I actually don't need the outer set of parentheses anymore because this is my answer. I had the GCF of 3. I was able to factor that x plus 5 out, and that left me with the 3x plus 2. If you want to see more of these, you can look at my description below, and there's some links to um, some videos that focus on these different types, including this one. Okay, let's do four terms. So what happens when you've got four terms? When we are factoring with four terms, we are going to use factor by grouping. It's actually really similar to what we just did in that last example by pairing some things off. So here comes the first example. We're going to do 4m cubed um, plus 8m squared plus 7m plus 14. So I'm going to go ahead and group these into pairs. So I've got a pair there. I'm going to keep that sign with it and a pair there. And I'm looking for GCFs. So the GCF in this first pair, let's see what goes into both 4 and 8. 4 divides into both of those. And for my variable m, I'm going to take the smallest co or the smallest power. The smallest power is 2. So 4m squared. So let's divide both of these by a 4m squared. 4m squared. The 4m squared comes out in front. 4m squared. And what are we left with? Almost everything cancels here except a single m in that first term. And in the second term, 8 divided by 4 is positive 2. Keep your signs. 
and then the M's cancel completely. Now for these to work out, I need an M plus two in the second pair. Let's actually do the second pair in green here. So in the second pair, I need an M plus two. Well, that makes it really easy to find this new GCF. Um, if I need a two left over from 14, so that GCF needs to be a seven. So let's divide both terms by seven. That's a seven there. So seven divided by seven leaves me with just an M, which is perfect. 14 divided by seven leaves me with a positive two, which is perfect. I just need to pull that plus seven out in front. Now I've got this M plus two, which I've got in common. I can pull that out in front. So I've got M plus two. And what I'm left with in the next set of parentheses is a 4m squared, so 4m squared plus a 7. And this is my answer. Here comes the next example. So in this one, I again have four terms. I'm going to factor by grouping. So I start by grouping this in pairs. So I've got everything grouped off and I'm looking for GCF. So I'm going to start with the first pair. What goes into both coefficients 16 and 6? Those are both even. So definitely a 2 goes into both of those. A cubed and A squared, I take the smallest power. So that's going to be A squared. I'm going to divide both of these by my 2A squared. The 2A squared comes out in front, A squared. And if I cancel here, 16 divided by 2 is 8. And I can cancel the A squared, leaving me with a single A. And then if I divide negative 6 by 2, I get negative 3 and the a squareds cancel. So I know that I want to end up with an 8a minus 3. Let's just write that in. 8a minus 3. I am so close. I have the 8a and I have the 3. I'm just off by a sign. So the GCF that I'm going to use, what I need to factor out here, is a negative 1. So if I divide everybody by a negative 1, it changes their signs and I end up with that same quantity in the parentheses. So I've got my 8a minus 3. I can factor that out in front. So 8a minus 3 and then 2a squared minus 1. This is the answer for this one. In the next one, I want to show you one where you've got a group, three terms, and then leave one term separate. This is another set of four terms. I want to factor by grouping, but this one's different than the others. Notice how I've got two squared terms. I've got one here in the front and I've got one here in the end. So instead, I'm going to group it differently and create a difference of squares. Okay, so what does this look like? I'm going to go ahead and group this first pair and then I'm going to leave the negative y squared by itself. Well, I've got a trinomial, I've got three terms. So I wanna factor the three terms into two binomials. I need an X here and an X here, and then two numbers that multiply to four and add to that four in the middle. It's gotta be two times two. So I've got plus two, plus two. Continuing to factor this first group of three, I get something squared, x plus two squared. And then let's bring down that minus y squared, minus y squared. So I really can think of this as something squared minus something squared. For this one, a is equal to that quantity x plus two and b is equal to y. Let's get this factored. And I know that I want to factor it into a sum times a difference. So I'm going to end up doing a plus b, a minus b. Use your parentheses at least to start. a is x plus two. So we're going to have the first thing plus the second and then the first quantity minus the second. Now, I don't need all these parentheses. I can actually just rewrite it without these inner parentheses here. So I can write it as x plus two plus y. I like my variables first. So I'm gonna do x plus y plus two, but honestly, we're adding so any order works. And then x 
minus y plus 2, and we've got our factorization. You are doing so great. Take a look at the links in the description below for more videos, and take a look at this next video here too. Thanks for watching.